Another Wednesday rolls around, I'm off to my morning clean. It's absolutely tipping it down outside today, but it's weirdly warm, which is quite nice, although I do still have all my layers on. Um, this morning I had my energy bill through for the month because I do monthly meter readings and I thought I'd mention it because I still get comments from people saying your energy bills can't be that low that's not possible this is what I pay and it always comes from people who just watch one video and clearly don't watch the videos where I say why things cost what they cost. I get reduced standing charges on my gas and electric purely because my energy supplier is offering discounts and I keep my actual physical energy bills low by not using anything or not using things as much as other people do. So I don't have my heating on. I've been very lucky. I haven't had to have my heating on since uh, the first week of January it hasn't been cold enough. Um, the lights that I use at home are all on LED bulbs. I limit my oven use to once a week when I do a batch bake and put like three or four different things cooking at once so that will last the week. I use the gas hob for everything else. My boiler's switched off. I don't use the running water in my flat because I don't need it. I have an electric shower but everything's on ration so water is rationed, entrance is rationed, the whole lot. And people say oh you can't live like that, you're living in austerity, blah blah blah. That is what life is like now and this is the way it's going to be for a long time because with energy bills as high as they are and the standing charges as high as they are um, most of your most of the energy bill you're paying for is standing charges so you have no control over it anyway so I've had my bill through this morning so I'm going to put up on the screen now <coughs> retrospectively what my bill has been for this month that is the actual bill so I'm not lying I'm not making it up I'm not click baiting anybody that is what my energy bill is for this month for my gas and electric you can see the standing charge rates that I'm paying you can see what I've used you can see the VAT so although I am like everybody else paying mostly for standing charges my energy usage is really low now this energy usage is 10 pounds less than last month, uh, sorry, £10 more than last month, so yeah, it was like, what, £38, £39 last month, and that's because my meter reads are mid-month to mid-month, and I was away for two weeks for Christmas and New Year. It doesn't make a huge difference, most of my electric runs whether I'm there or not, because of things like fridge, um, I've got two countertop freezers, I have a light on timer for when I'm away so most of the electric is running whether I'm there or not because the things that I am running when I'm at home don't have a massive impact most of the energy is being eaten by fridge freezers which is not really any surprise um, the gas wise the gas I used last month was because I was there for two weeks so I've only used £10 more and I'm really relieved about that. That's probably as bad as my bill is going to get now. My bills should start going down a bit because the nights are drawing out so my lights are going on later. I'm not having to, I'm not drinking quite as much hot tea as I was because I'm not as cold. So incrementally it'll start to go down a bit unless they put the energy bills up again. So that's as bad as it's going to get this year which means I can do some predictions on my spreadsheets and work out my energy usage. Now what I might do is a little tutorial on how I set up an Excel spreadsheet to monitor my energy usage. I think people might find that useful because I like to predict how much my bill is going to be. 
and because I have been with the same energy provider for a while my energy use doesn't change very much and it's just me at home that means that I can do fairly accurate predictions month to month and year to year things don't change that much in terms of usage and it's only when the price changes drastically that I need to make big adjustments but it means that I can do my predictions on average for the year and know whether the direct debits that I'm using are going to mean that I'm still going to be in credit at the end of the year. Now I put my direct debit up to £40 a month, I think it was from the first, from the, from the beginning of January, because I thought that the way the energy prices were and what have you, that my direct debit of, which was, I think it was £35.93, wasn't going to cover when it was averaged out over the course of the year. So I put it up to £40 a month and I'm going to monitor it. It looks like I will still be in credit at the end of the year, but it's not going to be that massive. And I'd rather tell them what I want to pay rather than saying, right, this is what you have to pay. But my energy provider's been really good. I don't get them telling me, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put your bill up X amount. I never have any of that. They're really, really good. They haven't put my bill up in two years. And the only reason it's got up this time is because I decided based on my Excel sheet calculations that I was probably going to have to anyway. And I thought I'd rather do it now and even it out over the year rather than waiting as late as possible and then having to put the direct debit up even more to cover the shortfall. Because if I find that I'm wildly in credit next year, I can always drop it down again. But the way the bills, they keep changing the energy prices, it's really hard to gauge what it needs to be. So that is my energy bill. This is what I pay. This is what I've paid this month for energy. And provided the, the prices don't change wildly, this is probably how it's going to stay um, for a couple of months. And then it'll probably uh, hopefully go down as the season improves and I'm using less gas, um, using less electric for lights, things like that. Now, if you find that you're not happy with your energy provider prices, go elsewhere. I always shop around. This is why I've now found the one that I'm now using, which is out Fox Market. If you are paying above the odds, if you're not happy with what you're paying for your energy, shop around. Don't just complain about it. Sometimes you can find deals. And I've been really lucky that out Fox Market have been very good with the standing charges. I don't know who's picking up the bill for that. I don't know how that works. What I do know is, well, I know that Outfox are a renewable energy provider. I don't know if that makes any difference. They are a small provider. I've always really liked them, but having Googled them, apparently they don't have a very good reputation, which surprised me actually, because I've found them very, very good. Uh, maybe I'm just a lucky one, I don't know. But shop around. You may not find a good deal, you may find a good deal, but shop around. Look on the uh, Money Saving Expert website, they're very good for, they have a, a, I think it's an energy saving club, so if you put in all your details, they will keep an eye out for deals. There aren't many around at the moment, and there have been for a while, but I think that my bill has been kept very low by A, a very controlled usage, which I can afford to do because I'm relatively young, fit and healthy. I don't need lots of central heating and things. I've worked my way around it. And because I shop around and because I keep an eye on things. So do have a look around if you can. But that's my update on energy. This is what I pay. Stop telling me that I am lying or winding you up or giving you BS. I'm not. This is what I, this is what I paid for my energy this month. That's it. That's today's update. That's, that's all I've got for you. <laughs> it's another average Wednesday. Doing cleaning, going home. It's raining. I'm not going anywhere else today by the looks of it. Catch you later. And um, be good. And if you can't be good, be careful. Mm-hmm.